So welcome back to the sea. What do we have on the show today? Today we have my wonderful Amiga 1200. Workhorse of the Wedge Machines. AGA. Something's in it. I think it's a Pi Storm 32. And uh, rocking all its stuff. I think I'm still in my original compact flash card. I didn't do hard drive files. I don't remember. Haven't been in here in a while. It's got a gig of RAM and it's working really great. It's nice and fast. But there's a new kid in town. This comes to us from Mr. Allen in Canada. And this is the brand new, in purple, Terrible Fire TF1232. Nice. What's the difference between this and my TF1230? This has this magical FPU, finally, and 128 megs of RAM on this bad boy. We have a jumper to knock it down to 25 megahertz on the fly for maximum compatibility. Enable 030 or not. We have a hard drive LED for when you're using your EHIDE dot device. And I believe there is a power header for a potential fan if needed. Pretty cool. Yeah, right there. Power. And a JTAG uh, header for programming in the future. Normal 40 four pin IDE header that I always crack because my cables got the thick stuff. Oh, there's your fan header right there, fan header. All surface mount, wonderful construction. Mr. Allen does wonderful at these builds. And I'll link down below where you can get them. So I paid 230 US dollars for this decked out model and 50 megahertz with a 50 megahertz FPU, 128 megs of RAM in purple. Allen PPC, as you can see right here active boards. He does the TF-335, 36, the 1230, 1260, 360, and now the TF-1232. So you click on that. It's got all the stuff about usage under Kickstart 3.0, making a disk image, some timing fixes, the edge connector, the IDE interface, real-time clock, downloading the EHIDE device driver, and what the jumpers and the fan headers do. Do not short your jumper pin for the fan. You'll kill the board if you do, or your Amiga. Important safety tip. Right now I'm rocking a Pi Storm in my 1200. We're going to turn this off, unhook its power. This does also have the Scan Plus AGA, which allows me to do various modes in 31 kilohertz with an adapter here on the back. My modulator's been removed. I was going to put it over here, but it didn't quite fit. So yes, currently I am rocking a Pi Storm with a Pi 3, whoops, 3B Plus and an Amiga Kit temperature sensor taped to the bottom here. So that's what I'm running, Pi Storm 32 with the 3B Plus. Works really good. We're going to just swap this directly out, hoping that I have my compact flash card in there still, because if not, I have to uh, do that too. I'm taping my fan dude down. I am not um, oh, full size card. It's going to suck. Edge connector check. Does it have the right edge connector? Yes it does. It does not have the crazy oversized one. So she's a full size card. She fits in here all the way minus a little finger nub right there. I have the hard membrane keyboard adapter, so I can just pull up on it. There's a hard uh, dude right there, so it helps with getting things out. I do not have my compact flash adapter, which explains why this would not load. If I pull this out, I will get the kickstart screen right away. Um, I left this in here because I broke the header. This is the Retro Rewind uh, double buffered one. But I did something and cracked the plastic, so I just left it on there. Okay, I found it in my box of Amiga stuff. I found actually another card. I don't think this is it, but I'm going to boot it and see what it does. I'm watching Glenn's Retro Show on YouTube stream. I do have my PCMCIA networking available if needed. Okay, so several minutes later in my box of Amiga stuff, I actually found it. I forgot how slow this original compact flash card booted, even though it's an extreme something I got on this image because I've upgraded and upgraded and upgraded it so many times with so much stuff. It's become a pain in the babushka. So, it's in there. i got to turn it off again and hook up my keyboard. I'll put mine. If you have your compact flash adapter and you're using like a Pi Storm or something, you don't have your boot device in there, it'll still try to query this card. And it could slow your boot process down. I just had no card. So I'm going to put my 
keyboard back in. We're going to energize here. Ethernet lights up. I don't get lights on, I get lights here. Now with 32-bit fast RAM on your accelerator card, you don't have to worry about your PCM CIA 8 meg Zorro bump into RAM and have to boot it into a 4 meg mode. This does have a GoTech internally with buttons out the side that I broke off and put a new button on. So one button is significantly shorter, but it's enough to touch it. I have a small LCD screen running cables through the vents to here. 3D printed, really crappy job on my original crappy printer. Now I could do the ehide.device without burning a custom ROM. I just make a load module command in my original hard drive, which will kick everything over to here and it'll boot. Well, there we go. Finally, holy crap. Okay, so let's zoom into this pickle here and see what we get. We have 128 megs of RAM, which is reported at 131. CPU reports 68030, 882, and an MMU. Databurst cache burst. Sysinfo, Sysinfo, 4.4, 68030, 882, 030 MMU. I am in 31 kilohertz mode. Double NTSC no flicker, even though she's a PAL unit. 60 hertz monitor makes it work better for me here. 9,058 dry stones, 9.45 MIPS, 1.31 megaflops, 3.28 speed of the uh, chip speed, uh, 51.8 rocking along. Give her the cold shower pull. You know, when you get out of the shower, you give it a little, make yourself feel better. 17 times faster than an Amiga 600 and 7.44 times faster than the original EC020. My drives are what they are. They are not fast. 2.1 meg per second on the uh, buffered compact flash card. Uh, I'm running 600 buffers and a 512 byte block. If you increase that a little bit, you can gain more speed, but 2.1 meg on a PIO mode 0 device is pretty daggone good. Uh, Peppy, hell yeah, memory, 128 megs of RAM, 32 bit, 2 megs of chip, that's all we got, which is more than enough for anything you want. How does it fare with like a game or something? Let's see. Alright, PAL high res, and we'll just leave it ugly for now. Display options, PAL, use, nine fingers, nine fingers. Latest WHD load, Much better. Helps if you have the program, the right version. I think my display is NTSC, but it works. Okay, now I'm going to try my screen mode again, promoted. Well, not promoted, but like better. So we're going to double, oh, double pal, high res. No flicker. I can also do multi-scan, but this works. Save this. Don't care because it works. Slide over. There we go. Looks so much better, doesn't it? So much better. Nine fingers again. I can press enter, but I'm going to let it load itself. Yeah, works perfect. <coughs> Still a little low. I know why. So if you are an NTSC user like myself and people all over the place are not, you can do WHD load prefs. And in here you look for PAL and you go like that. And then you save your thing. And that way when you run WHD load stuff, It'll check that pref file and run in PAL regardless of your clock of NTSC or PAL. So now it should be up in the middle. There we go, and I won't have that red line across the NTSC barrier. This will be 640 by 512, and now it's the proper speed and works fine. Nice. Alright, we've seen that many times. Good to know that I can keep my resolution now 
state of the art. Is it going to be in pal and be nice to me this time? <laughs> It'll flicker while it says auto adjustment, and sometimes your hand gets stuck while it does that. There we go. On NTSC, her hand will go like this and jiggle before it says state of the art. Perfect. Alright, rebooting. Now, Mr. Allen did tell me this is the first version. There could be bugs, so keep in mind this is the very first release version, so there could still be some bugs in the firmware. There shouldn't be so many as it is based off the Terrible Fire TF-1230, but just in case, if you find anything, please report it so it can get fixed. And we, on Mr. Allen's page, tf.boardsonline, will redirect you to Mr. Allen's page. And then TF-1232 Information and Installation tells you all about it. It's 64 or 128 megs, 60 to 30, runs at 25 or 50. It also has a PGA 882 socket. You can get a FPU of 25 or 50. It can run synchronous, or it can run asynchronous from the CPU. So you can use a 25 megahertz and a 50 megahertz mixed clock and it won't mess with it. 68 or 30 required for this demo. Yeah. Runs great. Smooth, looks wonderful. What's our temperature at after running these things a little bit here? Battery's flat. 100.9 degrees. Freedom units. So whatever that is in communist. 40. 40 degrees communist metric. Here's a trick. Cannon fodder is one of my all-time favorite games. So when you start, click save. Right? Level one. And type. J-O-O-L-S. Cheat mode active. And then just say exit. It didn't save anything. You get a four-star general right away. Jules is a four-star general. Gives him more hit points and 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 better like speed and just different character upgrade abilities. Now this is the very easiest level where you just wipe out three people. It's all mouse control. If you've never played cannon fodder, left click to move, right click to fire. Super simple. You can get rockets and grenades and you like that hold one down and just hit the button it'll fire them. Final final thoughts and results on the TF-1232. Number one, it's super inexpensive. Even at the maximum card of 128 megs of RAM and um, 50 megahertz with an FPU, it was 230 US dollars. It's going to come in a variety of options starting from a base version of 25 megahertz. I'm just reading it here. 25 megahertz, 64 megs of RAM at 135 US dollars. 135 bucks, that's freaking really good. Um, the ideal for a WH dealer machine. So a fully loaded 50 plus megahertz or 50 megahertz plus 128 megs of RAM, a PGA FPU for 220 US dollars. Customizable options in between, like if you want one without an FPU with the slot. Compared to the TF1230, it has a few extra features like a jumper, selectable CPU and FPU speed. An IDE header for the Terrible Fire uh, port and a fan header. The rest of the features are identical to the TF-1230. It will be available for Mr. Allen in, in North America, Super or Super Duper in the United Kingdom, and eventually Mr. Godfather. That I cannot do. Chucky. So, thank you, Stephen Leary, for the design of this and yeah that's that's freaking epic I had to search my messages because I get like a lot so that's a pretty cheap price so let's say 130 bucks 130 bucks 68 or 30 64 megs of RAM or pimped out 230 FPU 50 and 50 and 128 megs of RAM that's a hell of a good deal 
Now, if you're doing Pi Storm 32s or whatever you're rocking, I support pretty much anything. And it was in purple, so I had to get it. So that's all I got. This has been my quick review of the Terrible Fire TF1232 out in 2024 now. And I hope you enjoyed this quick review. Links in the description below. I don't get any kickbacks. I paid for my own unit. Nothing's free. So it's not like I'm making anything off this. I'm just promoting what I've purchased. So if you're interested, reach out to these people. I'll put all their links in the description below. And you can get yours too. Now, since the British pound and the euro monies is worth a hell of a lot more than American monies, your prices will be way cheaper. So like what I paid $230, you'll pay like 180 quid for the pimp. So that's not bad at all. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. Uh, what do you know from funny, you bastard?